Buenos días, bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Welcome to the Reforma Virtual Spanish Language Book Bus Winter Series. My name is Madeline Peña and I work for the Los Angeles Public Library. I am a past president of Reforma National and past president of the Los Angeles chapter and I'm the current co-chair of the Technology Committee. This event is free and is open to librarians, educators, students, and professionals interested in serving Latino and Spanish speaking communities. And this is our fourth session of the series, now in the winter time. And today we have Chao Luna, Penguin Random House Library Marketing, Scholastics, Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial, and Fondo de Cultura Económica. They will all be featuring new children and young adult titles in Spanish. But first, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our special keynote speaker, Gigi Morales. Gigi Morales was born in Jalapa, Mexico, the city of flowers and spring. After migrating to the U.S. in 1994, she struggled with English and loneliness in a culture foreign to her, but found solace in public libraries, where she read children's books with her son and discovered a renewed interest in stories and art. She is now the author and illustrator of many books for children, including the New York Times bestseller, Dreamers, Soñadores. Niño wrestles the world, and she's also a six-time winner of the Pura del Pre Medal for Outstanding Work of Literature for Children that best portrays, affirms, and celebrates the Latino cultural experience. So, Yuji is our Reforma uh, Pura del Pre Queen. Other honors include the America's Award, the Golden Kite Medal, the Christopher Award, the Jane Addams Award, and the Tomás Rivera Award. In 2015, she received the Caldecott honor for her book, Viva Frida. The titles of her latest books published in Spanish are Soñadores, Viva Frida, Nochecita, y Escalera a la Luna. Yuji Morales, welcome and thank you so much for being with us today. Muchas gracias. Hi, everybody. Um, th this is me, Yuji Morales. I'm here in my studio in Mexico. In Jalapa, and I'm gonna share my screen because I wanna show you some images. And um, here we are. I just wanna say first, I wanna say, how are you? <laughs> Hola. How are you doing, actually? You know, if you are like me, you are probably feeling a little, a little like Nino right here uh, between things happening, uh, struggles. Uh, we are in a very special time and you are probably also feeling the uncertainty, uh, sometimes the uh, insecurity or wondering how we do things in, this, in these moments. Uh, we are all learning new things, new ways of doing what we have been doing all along. And, and during these times, we have also learned to recognize the places in which we are strong, but also the places in which we are vulnerable. Uh, and many things have been evident. I know, I tell you this because I know it has been like that for me, that I have realized that there are things that need to change in my life and in, in, in our planet. And one of the things that I have learned to do is to realize that it is not only my struggle, uh, having a vision that there are other people there who are also uh, going through difficult times has made me uh, feel like a partner like a companion to other people. And if this is probably happening to you too, that you have learned to recognize uh, the difficulties that others uh, are going through, even if we didn't see them before. And you're probably also realizing that the things that are difficult, we are not gonna go 
through them all by ourselves. That when difficult times come, uh, usually we need someone else. Sometimes we need everybody else so that we can do it all together. And right now, because you probably need it just as, as I do, I need it. Uh, I wanna give you this hug. I wanna offer you this hug, colorful, warm, round, with people that, that you love, people who might be there with you, people who might not be there with you anymore, but it's still a hug full of presence and love and reassurance. Um, many of us have needed that hug and we have needed the reassurance. We, I, I don't know if this happens to you that you are hoping that someone is gonna come and tell you things are gonna be okay. Everything is gonna be fine after all. If we just stick with it and we do the work, everything is gonna be fine. If we adults feel like that, I, we can only imagine how it is like for children. Uh, my work and the work that you all do has to do with, with our readers, has to do with children. And I wanna also offer you this moment of, of recognizing that what children do are sometimes big things, but sometimes they are very small things. Sometimes they just need our daily uh, detail, very specific love, the way that we take care of them, the way that we carry them, the way that we put them in our laps and read them a story. And sometimes they also need this reassurance that lets them know that they are very special that they are actually the light of our universe, that they are the bright star that shines inside our hearts. This is the work that we do here. You and I, we are together because we have this interest of transforming our world. And we do it with the things that we have in our hands, with the things that are part of our work. I know that my work is the way I pray, the way I, I, uh, I dream, the way I hope, the way I uh, transform my world. And we do it uh, through books. We do it through this creative alliance between you and I, so that we can put in the hands of children these books that are part of how we give an offering, una ofrenda, to the transformation of our world. And in my case, I make books. And I want to read you this, uh, this quote from uh, Somos como las nubes. We are like the clouds from Jorge Argueta and Alfonso Ruano. He said, it says, since we left home, we haven't stopped singing. My father says, if we keep singing, we'll scare away the tiredness and the fear and become a song. I love this image and this poem because we can see and feel uh, this child being carried by his father. And uh, there is this warmth, but there is also this love that of protection. And the poem talks about the singing. This is a book about um, migration. And we can recognize now that when we are talking about migration, what children are going through are very, very difficult things, extremely difficult things. And I always wonder what happens to those children that sometimes are alone and um, how could we accompany them? I know that I make my books for that. I know that many of us are making our books and our work as being part of something that can go along with children and so that we can give them the support that they need, the reassurance they need, the warmth that they need, the hug that they might need at this moment or even a song. 
this is a map I'm showing you this because this is a, a, a map of the place where I was born. I always knew that I was born in America. And this is where I was born. You see, you can maybe see the arrow right there and it points to a place in Mexico, uh, Jalapa, Veracruz, where I was born. I always knew that the place of my birth was America. And the Atados mean America, the United States. It means America, the continent. I am an American since I was born. I didn't need to go to the United States to become an American. And I am an immigrant. And when I went to the United States for the first time, I was already an adult. And one of the things that um, always um, felt very strong to me that I started to recognize about the United States is this idea that America or the United States, was, which is the real name of, of the United States. Um, I heard a lot that the United States is a place um, of immigrants. It has been created by and for immigrants. And it wasn't until not very long ago that I started recognizing that that's not exactly true. That in fact, the United States, like many of the lands of the Americas, of the continent of the Americas, is actually a settler's land. It is a land that has been taken, that has been uh, been reclaimed by others, uh, that that came later, and that in order to have those lands, we have had to um, go through a, a process of um, actually destroying and killing the people that was there before. And here I have this quote from Eve and Talk, Eve Talk and Wang Yang, and they say like, how might our understanding of the United States as a settler colony rather than a nation of immigrants shift our thinking about representation of youth of color literature? Uh, and I think that this is a question that we have all to make to ourselves and put it in our work and see how we can answer it so that we can have a different lens through which to see the work that we are doing. Christina Rhodes says that we can have a vision that goes through a kaleidoscope, but the kaleidoscope is not this, this artifact with the mirrors and the lenses. It is that, but actually the kaleidoscope is an action. The kaleidoscope is a position. It's how we position our, our lens so that the light can come through and we can get to see how the world really is. I wanna offer you right now just a very quick kaleidoscope of what is what I am doing. I love to make books. I know that you are part of making books. All of us are part of making books. And during these times, I found that part of finding healing, finding a path, finding guidance, processing the things that I feel, my doubts, um, had been uh, relieved by creating, by making books. For me, making books is actually making answer for the questions that I have. And during this time, I have been making a book, which I just finished uh, the last day of, of, of the last year of 2020. And part of how it began, it was precisely with many questions. How do we transform ourselves? How do we heal the... Um, a pain, a damage that feels that is irreparable? How do we ask our children that they heal and they become, um, I don't know, adults that are uh, well-balanced and productive when we are actually giving them and damage them in ways that I don't know how they are gonna be able to repair. I have all these questions and I began trying to answer them. And I, like I said before, my way of answering the things that I don't know are making books. And I began to make a book 
that I wished so much that could accompany children when they need it. And I created Bright Star. To create Bright Star, I went to the places that I wanted to depict in my book and uh, I went to the border. And I wanted to get to see the borders in ways in which my, I have not seen them before. When we think of the border, what do you think about? Maybe perhaps you think about uh, immigrants, about illegal immigration, about walls, about there is nothing in the, in the, in the, in the border, but just, I don't know, nothingness, a desert where nothing grows. And what I did is I brought my kaleidoscope to that place to try to see exactly what the border is. Is the border a place of life, of surprises, of things that grow in their own way? And as I was discovering what the desert is, I also understood that the border is a place that is beautiful, harsh, and vulnerable. And I'm gonna show you here a few of the images that I took as references for creating my book, um, Bright Star Lucero. And also part of my, my going there was talking to people who are defending the border. The border as a place in where people can live, love, grow, thrive. And these are some of my sketches. These are part of my drawing, but more than my drawing, I will tell you they are part of discovering and understanding and getting to know the things I didn't know before and looking, looking hard and trying to realize um, that what I'm looking is something that, that is alive, that teaches me something, that are my companions, are all of our companions in this planet. And that as long as we or I get to recognize them, I will make them part of my own journey in this planet. We are not alone. And these are our Earth companions, our life's companions. The border is a place of contrast. It is a place where animals have to go to and, and, and run from place to place in order to find the things that they need to survive. And animals, nor plants, no borders. They don't know whether they are in Mexico or in the United States. But they, what they do know is that in our efforts to keep some people away, we, humankind has created barriers. And barriers are not only a big wall that might have not been built or may, may be built after all, but the, 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 the barriers are uh, many different kinds of ways and technologies, but they are also the ways that we see things and the ways that we think and put our thinking into creating uh, a barrier that is not gonna allow people to come into our place. Many of these animals, when barriers are made, whether it's a fence or they are bright lights or cameras or border patrols, many of these animals are stopped from using the corridors that they use in order to find the food, the water, shelter, and mating spaces, and even mating others uh, that they need to continue and to survive. 
these are only some of my sketches, my findings. Um, I use all last year to create the images, the final artwork, and um, and to make something that responds to my questions, not only because they are my questions, but because I hope that they will be the answer for, for the questions that we all have and that many of our children have as well. How are they safe? Where do they go when something hurts? And who is there to protect them? Because the answers to those questions are very difficult for me to answer because I cannot be there with every child that might need a story or one of my books. I created this book and what I'm offering is a little blanket that they can use to be warm when they need it and a song. And I hope that I'm leaving you with the words of Sibyl and Marilisa. They say that we as scholars and teachers, and I will add as librarians, as book creators, as people who put books in the hands of children, we need more books that can serve as windows for youth of color to envision their identities and experiences in nurturing, restorative ways. We need celebratory narratives that acknowledge a colonial history. We cannot just pretend that it didn't happen and it's not happening, but view it as a source of a strength that can help readers imagine new possibilities for a diverse society so that we can imagine a mundo más hermoso, a most beautiful world. And with that, I thank you for visiting me today. Judith, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with us. You know, I think we've told you this before. You're like a priestess. You know, your words are so beautiful. Your art, it's amazing. You're a very special person, and we really thank you for being here with us today. Yeah. <laughs> I want to echo what Madeline said. Thank you so much, Judy, for your wonderful presentation, for sharing with us for the empathy, the truth, and the love that you've shown us that we all need, but especially our children. So what a great way to start the day. Thank you. Um, good morning, afternoon. Buenos dias, buenas tardes a todos y todas. Mi, mi nombre es Adriana, my name is Adriana, and I work at the New York Public Library. I am a member of the Reforma National Membership Committee and the RNC committee, and also past president of the Reforma Northeast chapter. We're very happy you're here with us today. Our first presenter is Jimena Diego from Chauluna. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit our website, reforma.org slash winter book bus. And remember to use our hashtag, hashtag Reforma book bus. Feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. And as a reminder, these presentations are being recorded for future viewing. So here with us is Jimena. Thank you. Hola, Diana. Thank you for having me. Well, how do I follow that? Shushi, that was great. Um, let me um, share my screen. Uh, view, present. Do you guys see the screen? Yes. Great, thank you. Not minimize this. Um, well, before I dive into the presentation, I would like to briefly introduce Chao Luna. I started this business in 2016 to bring authentic and original Spanish language books to schools with dual language programs and to public libraries. We sell just books for children and young adults, and we work directly with publishers in Latin America, Spain, and the United States. First, I would like to present the books for babies and toddlers. Okay. 
Um, the first group is from a small publisher in Argentina called Periplo, which last year published two books that appear in the New York Public Library list of best books of 2020. El Jardín Nos Enseña Los Colores by Argentine illustrator and designer explores nature and colors. Each page shows a flower or tree with a small animal. Two labels frame the picture above the color and below. Um, above is the color and below is the name of the plant or flower. This book is predictable. We have the same background throughout the book. And these two la labels plus the added element of surprise, which is the animal or insect that the child has to point out and discover, brings uh, repetition, predictability, all things that um, capture uh, the eye um, of young toddlers. Another attractive board book, Luna y la Luna, introduces children to spatial concepts. Eh, arriba, abajo, cerca, lejos. Throughout the simple story, we find that Luna, the protagonist, is doing one thing while the moon is doing something similar. This zeroing in on the details and the illustrations anchoring the text bring to mind Goodnight Moon. It has also that rhythm and repetition of certain words that helps um, with the, uh, that guides the eye of children. It's a delightful reading for a read aloud or also as a bedtime story. Also by, this, by Periplo, Los Duendes de la Tierra uh, follows a seed as it falls in the dirt and we see it being guarded in the winter and open to become a plant and flower in the spring gives a fruit in the summer, all while being guarded by these magical elves. Again, text and illustration complement each other. And the last book in this collection, Amor, Amor, is the story that perhaps children may relate, relate to the most if they're a little bit older. Um, it explains what love is and where we find it. Uh, it features scenes from children's daily life. When a ball is bouncing, that is love playing. When I call mommy, that is love calling. The scenes are reassuring. There are diverse characters and it features like, or portrays the love for friends, parents, grandparents, pets, and nature. The last board book I wanna show today is by Chilean publisher Amanuta. Uh, and is illustrated by renowned artist Yael Frankel. The message of this story is we can all play an instrument, sing and dance, and we can all play together, be part of a big band. This message of inclusion um, starts from the beginning and it continues throughout the book, even though sometimes uh, two of the characters may feel that they don't fit in, they end up finding their place in this um, neighborhood band and uh, it's so rhythmic the text that it reads like a batucada like a, a samba with percussion for children a, li a little bit older comes this picture book that is not so so new it came out in Spain um, this summer in August of 2020 but it keeps reprinting uh, it's a sequel to the hug, el abrazo, uh, and I want to show you the little video of the book.
Um, well, I'm gonna stop this one because otherwise it's too long, but you get the idea. Um, mm, let's see if I can. Uh, oops. Um, okay. Uh, the next one is two classics, two fairy tales. They are um, the first two in a series by a Spanish publisher of Flamboyant. And the, what is great about these two fairy tales is that it allows for three reading levels. And again, I'm gonna show you the video of um, uh, Marina, who from, from Flamboyant, who will introduce these two books. So this is the two first uh, books for our classic tale series. Um, we have Hansel and Gretel here, and the other one is the Puss in Boots. We will have two more in 2021, which will be Red Riding Hood and another one. And uh, both of them are illustrated by Luciano Lozano. So same kind of illustrations. And I will show you how it works, how they work. Um, they have three levels of reading, we like to say, because they have like these words in capital letters. So for kids that are learning uh, letters, the second level of reading is, you know, easy sentences, and capital letters too, for kids starting to read. And the third level is uh, the original text with no censorship, it's same uh, tale that was uh, written uh, the first time. And all pages are threefold pages, right? So you have two, like two illustrations for every page. So this is how it works. Just let me show you, you know, same. Okay. All right. Um, so next, okay. The next book is a picture book that tells the story of a child's full day in school from his perspective. And the story is told just with pair of opposites. There is a huge toast that he needs to dunk in the small cup of chocolate. There is a small spider that gives him a big scare. Um, there is a soothing repetition in this narrative. And it's a great way of kids to um, see the first day of school as an adventure. Um, and it's a really beautiful book. Um, okay, the next two books I will show you are two um, books, two illustrated poems for children. I don't know, maybe because of Amanda Gorman, I feel that we will start reading more poetry at home and in school. Um, I feel that poetry will start having a moment. The thing about poetry is that it plays with words and poems themselves are very precise on how they use the words. They are often whimsical and silly, and there's a repetition, which um, allows for kids to build the vocabulary um, and themselves play with words. This first one is by poet extraordinaire Mar Venegas, and it plays with the vowels. Each vowel is an animal, a, araña, e, elefante, and so on. And each animal is doing something very specific, which allows us to engage with the characters. Again, every poem has very few words and they often repeat. The second book is, but there are poems by Federico Garcia Lorca and they have been illustrated by Astrid Lindgren Award recipient Isol. The poems have repetition and the action takes place in nature. There are animals, water, flowers, they are whimsical, and um, the fact that they play with nature 
allow children to, there's a, um, like a meditative uh, quality to the poems, even when they are playful. Leyendas del Recreo are great comics for kids who are starting to read on their own. It is a series, um, two have been published so far. The third one is on its way. The characters in this book are always in school and they get involved in adventures, some imaginary, some real, but they're always in a group. Um, the first one um, is included in the Fundación Cuatro Gatos list of best books of 2020, which is the one that you see here. And this is the second one, Leyendas del Recreo, Campeones del Mundo. And the third one, Viaje por Patios Infinitos, is coming, uh, I believe it's coming in March. ¿Qué es un refugiado? is an important and timely book. It's an easy reader, and the book includes first-person narratives of how children refugees are living right now, stressing the fact that these children are like the reader themselves, not any different. And they also include brief bios at the end of the book of famous refugees. Mis Tío Gigantes is a hilarious chapter book. Uh, the protagonist is a writer who keeps being interrupted by his two nosy uncles who always have something to say about the stories that he is writing. It plays with the concepts of creativity, the insecurities of writers, and also family ties. The book was included in the White Ravens list in 2020. The series, uh, Los Futbolísimos, has two new titles. Many of you already know the series. This book um, keeps selling well in our online bookstore. That's why I'm including this here. This is always um, the same format. There is a soccer team that has to travel somewhere new. There is always a mystery to solve and a match to be played. There is plenty of dialogue, and they all have a fast-paced plot. Verás caer una estrella, it's a novel that grabs the reader right from the very beginning. Lucia is escaping alone, following the guidelines that her father gave her. We are not sure where she's going, but it's always clear that she's, she's running for their life. Along the way, she encounters people who are friendly and others who want to hurt her. And we're always unsure who is who. It is set during World War II, and we're also never sure throughout the narrative if the men in black will apprehend her or not. This is a great historical novel. And it was also highlighted by the Premio Fundación Cuatro Gatos um, recently, a few weeks ago. It's one of the best books of 2021. Nuevo Mundo is the graphic novel that I will highlight today. Um, this was a finalist for the prestigious Will Eisner Award for best graphic novel. It was a finalist, it didn't win, but um, the characters are trying to fight for their own survival in this so-called new world. There's a Native American, a Portuguese, and an African man who has been enslaved. These narratives merge um, like beautifully and they all end up helping each other. They are all, they are all in some ways um, trying to find who they are in this new place. Uh, this is um, Atlas, El Gran Viaje Ilustrado, starts our uh, non-fiction books. Uh, El Gran Viaje Ilustrado is a large format book it shows the world with its geopolitical marks, but it also features the culture of different countries and regions. So we have the way that people dress, the way they travel, how they make music, uh, their means of transportation is super colorful. It 
the it's a very uh, cool way of learning geography. Another book to travel is El Mundo es mi casa, which tells us a day in the life of children from around the world. What do they have for breakfast? What they like to do? Um, how their house is? And then we have El Gran Libro de los Super Tesoros, which is the sequel to El Gran Libro de los Superpoderes. Again, I will let Marina show us this book. So this is the, the great book of superpowers. After all the success we had with the great book of uh, superpowers, we have so many, many, many copies and uh, we have translated it to more than 15 languages. So we decided to do this one. The first one was about inner things that kids had, like um, uh, being patient or uh, being brave. And this one is about not inner things, but things that they can find outside and uh, they should cherish and um, value. Okay, I've chosen four. Family, I love this one. And, uh, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, adequate for these times is health. You know, being healthy is really important. So, and all the things that appear in the book are uh, non-material, except books. Jimena? Yes. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. So now, our second presenter is Miriam Tuliao from Penguin Random House Marketing Group. Penguin Random House Marketing Group is a Reforma Corporate member. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reforma.org forward slash winter book bus. And remember, if you share it on social media, use our hashtag Reforma Book Bus. We will be sharing also uh, Miriam's information and Penguin Random House Marketing Group information via the chat. And also via the comment box, you can ask questions if you have them and they will be answered at the end. So, Jimena, are you ready? Uh, yes, thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to join you today. Um, I'll be highlighting some uh, new and soon to be released uh, Spanish language titles. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to briefly tell you about a few notable programs. Next slide, please. I invite you to join the library marketing team's next morning book buzz on Wednesday, March 3rd at 11. It will highlight the spring and summer's new releases. Next slide, please. We hope that you found the ALA Midwinter Conference both inspiring and energizing, and we certainly miss seeing everyone in person, but are very happy to share with you information about some forthcoming titles in English and Spanish, as well as our recorded book buzzes and events. And this includes an interview with Isabella Allende in conversation with her editor, discussing her new book, A Soul of a Woman. And I hope you'll check it out. Um, the URL is on the page there. Uh, next slide, please. Also, we hope that you'll join us on March 11th for the second episode of Library Lunch and Learn. This is a professional development opportunity for library staff, and the program will feature librarians from the National Network of the Libraries of Medicine, uh, creators Heather Einhorn and Adam Staffaroni, author Dr. Suzanne Samard, and other guests. Um, and our focus um, for this episode will be on scientific topics, and that will range from citizen science projects in libraries, women in STEM, and forest ecology. Next slide, please. 
So um, now on to the books. Our first book, Milo Imagina el Mundo, by Pat, I, Matt de la Pena and Christian Robinson, the award-winning team behind Last Stop on Market Street and Carmela Full of Wishes. This vibrantly illustrated picture book tells the story of Milo, a budding young artist who lives with his grandmother in New York City. Next slide, please. Once a week, Milo and his older sister take the subway to visit their incarcerated parent. During the long ride, Milo studies fellow subway riders, drawing pictures of their lives as he imagines them. A whiskered man working on a crossword puzzle becomes a man playing solitaire. Spotting a woman in a gown, Milo sketches a picture of her getting married in a cathedral. And then there's the boy in the suit. Milo draws him arriving home to a castle. Next slide, please. To Milo's surprise, his drawing subject, this boy, gets off at the same subway stop and waits in the same long line at the prison to visit his own parent. What if, if everyone's life is different from what we can imagine them to be? Milo Imagina El Mundo tells a very compelling story, and there's a very personal co co connection for the illustrator Christian Robinson. When he was a child, his mother was incarcerated, so this story is especially meaningful for him. Next slide, please. De Aquí Como El Coqui by Nomar Perez is a heartwarming story based on the author illustrator's own experiences. Miguel, a young boy who lives in San Juan, Puerto Rico, always hangs out with his pet Coqui. Together, they greet neighbors, visit bakeries, and enjoy listening to his grandfather's stories. Next slide, please. One day, Miguel learns that he and his parents are moving to the United States, which means leaving behind his beloved grandparents, their home in Puerto Rico, and also Coqui. Life in New York City is overwhelming with unfamiliar people, places, and foods. Next slide, please. But when Miguel and his mama go exploring, they discover some places that remind them of home. This moving story touches on themes of fear, dislocation, but also family, love, and community. The author, Nomar Perez, was born in Ponce, Puerto Rico, and moved to Ohio at the age of 10. He studied computer animation and painting at Bowling Green State University, and he's illustrated several board books. Um, this, however, is his first full-length picture book. Also want to note that um, De, de Aquí Como El Coqui will be narrated in audiobook by Almare Guerra. And Almare has uh, read many uh, young adult books in audio. Um, she also reads the English version of this particular book as well. And among her many credits is Solo Pregunta uh, by Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Next, please. Amor de Pelo. Uh, translation of the best-selling picture book, Hair Love, by Academy Award-winning director Matthew Cherry and illustrator Vashti Harrison. It's up to daddy to give his daughter an extra special hairstyle. Next slide, please. Zuri's hair has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. Zuri knows she's, it's beautiful. When daddy steps in to style it for an extra special occasion, he has a lot to learn, but he loves Zuri and he'll do anything to make her and her hair happy. Next slide, please. Tender and empowering Amor de Pelo is an ode to loving your natural hair and a celebration of daddies and daughters everywhere. Next slide, please. Areli es una dreamer. When Areli was just a baby, her mama and papa moved from Mexico to New York with her brother Alex to make a better life for the family. And when she was in kindergarten, they sent for her too. Next slide, please. Everything in New York was different. Gone were the Saturdays at Abuela's house, filled with cousins and sunshine. Instead, things were busy, 
fast and noisy. Aureli's English came out wrong and schoolmates accused her of being illegal. But time passed and Aureli slowly became a New Yorker, although not an American citizen. I could do anything here, Aureli says one day to the city sky. Someday I will. Next slide, please. Aureli es una dreamer is a moving story about one girl living in two worlds. Aureli Morales Romero, the author, was born in Pueblo, Puebla, Mexico, but was raised in New York City. She is a DACA recipient, and Aureli, Aureli is a Dreamer is her debut children's book. A graduate of CUNY Brooklyn College with a bachelor's degree in childhood bilingual education, she currently works as a substitute teacher. And one day she hopes to have her own classroom where she can teach children to value the power of storytelling and empower them to share their own stories. Next slide, please. Canta Conmigo, an illustrated storybook celebrating the life and legacy of the beloved queen of Tejano music, Selena Quintanilla. Uh, from her earliest stage, young Selena knew how to connect with people and unite them with music. Canta Conmigo follows her rise to stardom from her position leading the family band, singing at rodeos and quinceanera parties to her performance in front of thousands at the Houston Astrodome. Young readers will feel empowered by Selena's dedication from learning the Spanish language as a teenager, designing her own wardrobe, and traveling across the nation to sharing with the world her pride in the Mexican-American roots and love of the music and fashion. It's a local author's debut. Diana Lopez was born and raised in Corpus Christi, Texas, Selena's hometown, and brings an unparalleled passion and personal touch to the tale. Teresa Martinez is a Mexican illustrator and Selena fan who has spent a lot of time in Cor Corpus Christi and whose art brings Selena's story to life. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. Our next book is El Ciclo de la Luna Roja Libro. Uh, the third book, La, La Sombra de la Luna. This is the thrilling conclusion to Jose Antonio Cotrina's fantasy trilogy. Um, it shakes Roca Varancolia completely as ghosts from the past. Creatures of the night and sleeping powers awaken in the ultimate battle that will change the fate of the kingdom. The red moon has finally arrived and its influence is unleashed. The cruelty of the city runs through the veins of the harvest. While some find strength to fight their inner darkness, others embrace the dark path that lies before them. The price of magic will be a great sacrifice, one that can cost the youth their humanity. As the city succumbs to the red moon, the group comes face to face with the wrath of one ancient evil and the impending resurrection of another. The harvest must unite for the future of the kingdom and end of an era of death and destruction. Cotrina is a Spanish writer focused mainly on fantasy, science fiction, and the horror genres. He's best known for his novel set in the Between the Lines universe. Next slide, please. Atlas de Hermencia, uh, climatica. What can we do to stop climate change? What is the greenhouse effect? Why are the oceans warming? And what is the impact of fashion on climate change? What is the carbon cycle? The answer to these and many other questions can be found in this unique guide to the climate crisis. Next slide, please. With accessible text and powerful images, um, this guide explains environmental science to the whole family. It's a reference book that introduces how the Earth's climate works, as well as the causes and impact of climate change. Next slide, please. Additionally, it explains science and theories in a highly visual way, with infographics, explanatory texts, and more than 30 uh, impressive maps. Next slide, please. 
oceanos. The oceans occupy 70% of the planet's surface and are home to a million extraordinary species. Formed four billion years ago, oceans are home to an unsuspect, unsuspected amount of activity. 80% of oxygen is produced in the oceans, and scientists estimate that 80% of volcanic eruptions occur in the oceans. Um, with this, this is a guide that has clear text, 3D images, and cross sections of habitats and uh, natural phenomena. Oceanos offers a complete introduction to the science of the oceans, the open ocean, the surface op ocean, the coast, and the human impact of on the oceans. Um, it's it includes. Um, also um, an extensive catalog of animal species, um, as well as the different habitats, uh, including salt marshes, coral reefs, and estuaries. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. I also wanted to share with you um, some new titles, forthcoming titles in audio. Uh, Cartas de Cuba by Ruth Behar. This is an inspiring story of a young Jewish woman who escapes from Poland to rebuild her life in Cuba while working to rescue the rest of her family. Um, also forthcoming is Aquí es Vimos by Matt de la Pena. From the streets of Stockton to the beaches of Venice Beach to the Mexican border, Aquí es Vimos chronicles the journey of self-discovery of a boy trying to forgive himself in an unforgiving world. Also, uh, Las Verdades Que Sostenemos, Truths We Hold by Kamala Harris. Um, now it's adapted for young readers. Um, this is a very empowering memoir about the values um, and inspirations that guided Kamala Harris's life. Um, this will be narrated by Jane Santos, the narrator who also read the Spanish version of Becoming. And finally, Dragones y Tacos 2. Uh, this is by Adam Rubin. Um, and we anticipate um, th this is a, the second version, and this is by the award winning creators of Robo Sauce and um, Secret Pizza Party. And they're returning with their um, gus gut bustingly hilarious companion to the best selling title Dragons Love Tacos. Next slide, please. Um, so that's it for me. I, you know, please stay in touch. Um, the URL on this page will give you access to um, digital information and digital arcs. So um, thank you so much for your time and thank you all you, that, for all that you do to support um, Penguin Random House's authors and books, as well as for all that you do to support readers everywhere. Take care. Thank you, Miriam. And now uh, we move over to our next presenter. Um, our third presenter today is Maria Dominguez from Scholastic. For more information about this company and the contact information, please visit reforma.org slash winter And remember to use our hashtag, Reforma Book Bus. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please add them in the chat box during the presentation and at the end, they will be answered. And just to remind you all that the presentations are being recorded for future viewing. So welcome, Maria Dominguez. Here, okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's really wonderful to be able to, you know, present the books on behalf of Scholastic in Espanol. Um, let me share my screen. Um, okay, can everybody see it? Um, everybody can see the, the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, um, please make sure just to put them in the chat. I will be more than happy just to answer them after the presentation, but please feel free to shoot questions, um, as many as you want. Um, um, I am going to, um, first, you know, we are a Scholastic Espanol, and we are part of a Scholastic. 
um, and Scholastic is the largest distributor of children's books in the world. And Scholastic Español's mission is to publish diverse uh, um, books on diversity and books that reflect the world uh, we live in. Uh, we translate, we mainly translate books from English into Spanish and we publish around 80 titles a year in Spanish or bilingual. Um, like around um, 30 of them are for trade. They also are in a book format and the rest we do for the uh, school market. The first book that I want to bring to you in this presentation is a bilingual board book and uh, the title is Hello Friend, Hola Mio. It is by One to Three Andres. Uh, One to Three Andres is a, a husband and wife duo uh, uh, that creates uh, music in English and Spanish. Um, Andres Alguero, um, he was born in Colombia and uh, his wife Cristina she grew up here in the United States, but her parents are from Colombia. The illustrations of this book um, are by Sara Palacios. Sara is from Mexico, and she was a recipient of the um, Pura del Pre Illustrator's Honor in 2012. Uh, it is a board book, perfect for toddlers for ages two to four. And it is based on a sign uh, that the one to three and dress duo um, recorded a while back. Um, the song is about, um, you know, we can all be friends. It's about friendship. It doesn't matter, you know, where you're from, um, if, you know, what language do you speak? Um, we, we can all be friends. We can all understand each other. As you can see, you know, in this illustration, it is just, you know, um, the colors are super warm and the kids are sweet and, and there's so much fun and there's so much vario you know, flavor to it. Um, here is another illustration. Um, and, and really the book is wonderful for reading, you know, um, children's with parents, uh, bedtime for singing. Um, the, the sun is also available in uh, the author's website. So that's something that can be used in the classroom and, and it is a lot of fun. It's really a beautiful book um, by Kurt Real Books. Um, the second book that we have in the list is also a bilingual board book. It is Poppy Love, Amor de Cachorrito, and it's by Caroline Jane Church. Uh, we have published several books by this author. And um, in this, the text is a poem that guides the reader through puddle jumping in springtime, and kite flying in the summer, and leaf chasing in fall, and ice skating in winter. It is perfect for teaching the seasons to children. Um, it, uh, the board book format, it's great for toddlers. And, uh, and it's just a beautiful point that everyone will love. And of course, you know, especially for those who love puppies. So here we go. Um, the next bilingual book that I have in my presentation is Sing With Me, Canta Conmigo by Jose Luis Orozco. Jose Luis is um, a, a, um, a recording artist. He's an educator and he is, um, is a children's author's uh, book. Um, um, the book is a collection of songs, songs that are very well known from Old MacDonald, How to Farm to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and they are in English and Spanish. It's for, for, perfect to have in the classroom and also at home. The illustrator is also Sara Palacios. And the book is in hardcover. And here it comes Baby Shark. Baby Shark, it's based on the popular son um, with the characters, you know, with the family shark that um, it's so, you know, well known by kids. We have published three titles in paperback, um, Baby Shark titles. Uh, Baby Shark, Bebe Tiburón. Um, the second one, Bedtime for Baby Shark. A la cama, bebe tiburón. And the third one is Wash Your Fins, Baby Shark. Lavate las aletas, las aletas, bebe tiburón, which is perfect, you know, during this time that we, you know, the kids have to learn, um, you know, to, to wash their hands more often. So that's what's behind the idea of that third book. Uh, the books are in paperback. They are bilingual in English and Spanish. They are easy to read. Um, they are a lot of fun and the illustrations are simply wonderful. They are for kids ages three to five and these books are also available in ebook format. And here comes we Love Mr. Panda, Te Amamos Señor Panda. This is the last bilingual book I am presenting today. Uh, we have published um, five bilingual books by, you know, in this series. 
Uh, we love you, Mr. Panda. Thank you, Mr. Panda. I'll wait, Mr. Panda. Please, Mr. Panda, and good night, Mr. Panda. The books are by Steve Anthony, and Mr. Panda is just perfect for uh, teaching manners, perseverance, um, and, and kindness, and with a lot of fun. Uh, so my, I really recommend, you know, for any parents who wants to teach manners to their kids, you know, to grab these books because they are funny and at the same time, they are they are really. You know, they, they teach um, values that are important for the kids to have. Um, it's for kids ages three to five. And the Spanish, the bilingual books are in paperback. They're all in paperback. They're also available in ebook format. Okay, now I'm going to move to the first title that I have in, in Spanish only. Um, this is the second book that we have translated into Spanish from uh, the author Peter Reynolds. The first title that we translated was The Work Collector, El Coleccionista de Palabras. And Peter Reynolds explore uh, the many ways that a single voice can make a difference in this book. Each of us, each and every day, have the chance to say something meaningful with our actions, our words, and our voices. This book is perfect for kids activists everywhere. The book is in paperback. It is for ages four to eight, and it is also available in ebook. The illustrations are simply amazing. Um, um, as a matter of fact, Peter uh, himself did all the lettering in Spanish. Um, so, um, I, it, it's you know the message um, that each spread transmits is just very powerful. Um, if, if you see, you know, um, an empty lot, you know, you could say something, planting seeds and, you know, um, seeing the flowers grow. That's, that's what he's trying to say. You know, we, we should not remain silent. We just have to say something about, you know, how we feel about other feel. Um, that's very important. And the last one says, si te sientes agradecido por la vida, di algo bajito para que te escuchen las estrellas. El universo. The important say, thing is to say something, you know, don't remain silent, just communicate. And it is a super powerful message and very, very uh, beautiful, beautifully done. Um, the book is in paperback and the English is in hardcover. Uh, I'm moving now to a different series. Uh, it is Pick the Pop. Serious, yeah, Pick the Pop is extremely funny. And we have published um, four books in Spanish, all in paperback. They're by Ar um, Aaron Blavy. And in this particular book, Pick the Pop tells lies to get what he wants and get Trevor to Sasha's dog in trouble. When Pick hatches a plan to get at the hidden treats in the back of the closet, his lies get Trevor thrown out of the house. Finally, he's all alone with those treats. What he didn't expect was a bowling ball. So Pick the Pop is always, you know, uh, doing terrible things to his um, friend Trevor. And then at the end, he has to pay dearly for, you know, all his, um, you know, all the trouble that he creates. Uh, these are the other three books that we have uh, translated into Spanish. Uh, Chancho el Poc, Chan um, Chancho la Estrella, y Chancho el Campeón. Uh, all the books rhyme, by the way, the text in Spanish rhymes, and, and they are a lot of fun to read. Uh, now, something for uh, readers. Um, they, this is the first uh, book that we have um, in this category, and they are just great for kids who are learning to read. Um, the Spanish um, are translated from the famous series Fly Guy by Ted Arnold. Um, the title of this book, this is our most recent title, is El Ataque del Hombre Mosca de Quince Metros. So what happened in th this book? Um, after grabbing a snack from a radioactive trash can, Fly Guy grows to 50 feet tall. Can Boss and the scientists figure it out how to shrink him before the police and military attack? Um, all Fly Guy books are um, very easy to read. They have uh, amazing illustrations and are a lot of fun. These books are for ages, uh, for kids ages four to six, and they are in paperback. Uh, we also have Fly Guy in nonfiction. 
Um, as a matter of fact, here we have um, Omre Mosca Presenta Dinosaurs. In this book, uh, Fly Guy and Boss visit a natural history museum to learn all about dinosaurs. With a straightforward text, humorous asides, and kid friendly full bleed photographs throughout, young readers will learn a lot of fun facts about these prehistoric creatures. The books is also, um, the nonfiction series is also by Tech Arnold's. And for my next slide, you can see, you know, we have done quite a few of these titles and they are all available in paperback and also in ebook format. Okay, I'm um, now uh, presenting readers for ages four to seven. We have the brand um, Acorn. Uh, we have translated five series in, these, um, uh, in the Acorn brand. Um, the first series is Hola, Cangrejito. The second one is Unicornio y Yeti. The third one is Hola, Erizo. The third one is Dragón by Daft Pilkey. And the fifth one, and our most recent one, it's um, is a bilingual um, book. Um, the series is a frog and dog book. Um, the Acorn series is aimed at children who are learning to read with easy to read text, a short story format, plenty of humor and full color artwork on every page. These books will boost reading confidence, uh, confidence and fluency in every kid. Uh, we also continue publishing um, um, Spanish titles uh, from the brand uh, Branches. Um, um, this series is Our Diaries or Diario de una Lechuza. We have uh, translated nine titles in this series. Uh, number nine is La Gran Pijamada de Eva. In this particular book, Eva is birth Eva's birthday and She's having a special sleepover, but one of her friends doesn't want to come. And Eva thinks that it might be because she's afraid to stay away from her house for the first time. Um, the books are separated in chapters and there are four colors. You can see um, um, right here, um, they are written after where, you know, it is a diary. So they're mainly written on the um, first person. Um, they are, you know, super interesting. Um, they're 80 pages long, but very easy to read and have a lot of uh, colors and um, illustrations throughout. The author is Rebecca Elliott, and she's also the author of the new, our new series, Unicorn Diaries, uh, Diario de un Unicornio, uh, the first book in the series, is El Amigo Magico de Iris. And the books are also for ages five to seven. And they're also available in ebook uh, format. And uh, it is about a school of unicorns uh, in the middle of a forest. Um, they are super cute. They all have magical powers, um, you know, beautiful colors. And um, the the books in each book, there is something that they're trying to, um, uh, some kind of power they're trying to acquire, something that they're trying to learn at the same time that they try to be good friends to each other. It, to each other in the school. Um, definitely recommend it. Very soon we'll be having book number two for uh, fall 2021. Um, then we have continuous publishing um, the series I Survive in Spanish, So Would You Be? Uh, there, our most recent title is El Bombardeo de Pearl Harbor, 1941. Uh, in this book, 11-year-old Danny Crane is alone on his favorite beach in Hawaii when the world is torn apart and World War II officially hits the United States. Does he have what it takes to find his way home in the midst of the bombs, the smoke, and the destruction of the day that will live in infamy? Um, the book is for kids 7 to 10 years old. Um, it is also available in a book format. We have published... Um, four or five titles in Spanish, um, 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 San Francisco Earthquake, Titanic, the Sinking of the Titanic. And they are, as you know, they're all based on historical events. Um, they have a lot of facts um, and, you know, important information, um, very interesting things that the kids, you know, likes to know and that are important that they learn, uh, not only in school, but that they know, you know, from reading these books at home. 
Um, then we have another, a new series. Uh, well, it's not a new series for us, but yeah, it's a new series in this presentation. It's the bad guys. These are chapter books. And these are a bunch of bad guys that really what they want to be is heroes. Um, they're a lot of fun. This is book number six in the series. Um, and the title is Los Tipos Malos en el Alienígena versus Los Tipos Malos. Uh, the author is Aaron Blaby. He's the same author of uh, the series Pick the Pop that I presented before. And um, the books are full of action and, and, and jokes and, and they, they are simply, simply great. And, you know, um, kids will laugh from beginning to end, you know, while reading these books and practicing, you know, reading at home. I would definitely recommend them. Um, they are for ages seven to 10 years old and they're all available in a book format. Um, these are all the books from the same series. So remember, these are all in paperback. They're also available in a book. And so far we have translated six titles and number seven should be out uh, this fall, this coming fall, uh, fall 2021. Okay, now we uh, come with a beautiful, beautiful new book by Pam Munoz Ryan. Um, she's the author, as everybody knows, of Esperanza Rising and Dreamer and so many other wonderful titles. This is a middle grade novel. And in this book, um, a boy who loves stories, um, uh, you know, it's, it's trying to find answers about his mother who is no, you know, who is not in the picture. And it is that journey of these boys, you know, from the story that his abuelo um, tell him, um, just to put all the pieces together about his mother. So it is super interesting and it's beautifully written, you know, in Pam's style. Uh, the Spanish edition is in paperback. It is for kids age 12. Uh, it is also available in ebook. And if you look at the bottom of the slide, um, there is a discussion guide. We have a discussion guide for this book for teachers who wants to use the discussion guide uh, in the classroom. Or, you know, if there's a reading club, the, the discussion have questions and we'll be able to help, you know, um, with, um, to have a serious discussion about the book and the journey that Massimiliano takes um, in order to find his mother. Okay, then next, these are other books by Pam, um, The Dreamer, which is really beautiful, El Soñador, Esperanza Rising, and Jo Naomi Leon. Okay, then we have a, uh, also a middle grade novel uh, that is um, La Luna Dentro de Mi by the author Aida Salazar. Sally Rivera's life swirled with questions about her changing body, her first attraction to a boy, and her best friend's exploration of what it means to be gender fluid. But most of all, her mother's insistence she have a moon ceremony when her first period arrived. It's an ancestral Mexico ritual that Nima and her community have reclaimed. But Sally promises she will not be participating. Can she find the power within herself to take a stand for who she, she wants to be? Um, this is um, the story of a girl, she's 12, and she's really, um, um, is having you know, a lot of questions about her um, heritage and who she is um, living here in the United States. Um, the story is really powerful and um, it's, it's, it's just, you know, a great reading for any girl um, ages eight to 12. Um, the next uh, category that I have in my presentation is uh, graphic novels. And uh, we have three graphic novels by Raina Talgemeyer that we have translated into Spanish. Um, there's also a discussion guide for anybody who wants to use these graphic novels in, um, you know, in the classroom and also in your reading club. Um, uh, yeah, we are on time now, and we did yeah. have a question that I wanted to ask sure. you. Um, Andrea Webster asked if any of the titles are available in hardcover. I don't know if it was Five Guys specifically or the Scholastic titles. Okay, yes, for example, Sing With Me is available in hardcover. Um, let me think about the others that I presented. Uh, for example, I have the, you will see this PDF presentation in the, um, in the website, but for example, Dark Man, it's available in hardcover. Um, I think everything else is in paperback, unfortunately. I know you librarians, I mean, like to have, you know, the hardcover because the books tend to 
um, you know, last longer. But I don't want to take any more of your time. Uh, the PDF presentation will be available on the website. And please just feel free just to go through it. Okay. Thank you so much. And, you know, thank you for the invitation again. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Our next presenter is Veronica Cervera from Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial. Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial is a corporate member of Reforma. Visit reforma.org forward slash winter book boss for more information about this company and their contact info. And we will also share it here in the chat. Remember our hashtag is hashtag reforma book boss. So feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. Veronica, welcome. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Madeline. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting us. And we are um, part of the Spanish division of Penguin Random House. We have like 65 new releases every month. If you want to be on our mailing list, the information will be shared here. And our books are available through all the main distributors in the US. Let me share my screen. And let me make it. Okay. I'm sorry, let me move this far so I can put it on presentation. Okay. Now, do you see it dry? Yes. Thank you, Madeline. So we have some books for children today. The first two are part of a new series that work on social emotional themes. It's called Los Trucos de Teo, Teo's Tricks. The author Chiara, Chiara Pirodi is from Italy. She's a psychologist specializing in developmental cognitive therapy. And she offers up some tips here in this series to help our children keep their emotions in check on this one. For example, I, are you very angry? Because it's bedtime and you have to stop playing or something like that. Um, this is for little kids, it's up to kindergarten, but I think it's great for the collections and moms are looking for books like these, like crazy. Being at home during the pandemic with the kids, the job, the cooking, everything at the same time. At least my friends and my colleagues are looking for things like this. It includes five tips at the end to help children manage their emotions. This one is part of the same series. Tienes miedo a la oscuridad? Are you afraid of the dark? And is to help children when they are when they have to go to bed and they are afraid of being alone. Also in social emotional, we have this yo tam, this book. Yo también soy diferente. I am different too. It's stories to increase your self esteem. The authors are from Spain. It's a picture book, a hardcover. Is great for, for read aloud. By reading the stories in this book, you will discover that we are all different and wonderful and the world needs every one of us. And without us, it, won't, it will not be the same. It includes tips for families and educators. There are six stories that treat different things. Al otro lado de la bahía, across the bay, a lot of you maybe already know this book by Carlos Zaponte that was recipient of the Pura Beltre Illustrator Honor. The author is from Puerto Rico, but he lives in New Jersey. He's also the illustrator of this wonderful book and he made the translation into Spanish. The themes here are family, love, and identity. And it's the story of Carlitos who lived with his abuela. 
and he decided to, um, in a small town, and he decided to cross the bay in the search of a different life and also in search of his father. But at the end, he will find out what is really meaningful to him. It's also a picture book, a hardcover. Now we have um, this one and the next one are middle gray versions of Los Preguntones, the questionnaires, this wonderful series that is so fun and full of adventures. This is number three, is Pedro Perfecto y la Mansión Misteriosa, Iggy Peck and the Mysterious Mansion. In this book, Ada's twist on Bernice inherits an old house from ice cream mogul Herbert Shever. And the house is supposed to be filled with countless rooms and all, Pe all Fe Pedro's favorite architectural periods are in the house, but they're looking for a room that they cannot find. And with his knowledge, he will help everybody to find it. Um, this is the third book of the series. Um, I have to say that the Obama's production company chose Ada's Twist picture book for a, media, for a media event that will be out this 2021. We don't have a day yet. Some themes on these books are mystery and suspense, art, music, of course, um, um, architect, uh, architectural, uh, um, friendship, humor, adventure, and Halloween, since the, since the house seems to be haunted. We have teacher's guide on our website for this book and also for the next one, which is part of the same series of the questionnaires, some ch chapter books. Uh, and this is the one for Sofia Valdez, the only Latina on this series. And it, this book will help kids to understand how the election um, process take place. Uh, in this book, the class is choosing a, pe a pet, a mascot, and they have to choose between Team Total and Team Bear. When they count the votes, uh, there is a tie because one boat is missing and they have to find it. This also has a, a reading guide on our website. The next two are new books on the Judy Moody series. We have been working on this series for a while and we're reprinting some of them, but these two are totally new in Spanish. The first one is Judy Moody, La Fiesta de Te Real, Judy Moody and the Royal Tea Party. Um, Judy Moody finds out, finds out that there's some connection between her family and the Queen of England. But at the end, the connection is not so good <laughs> or not, not as good as she thinks. And maybe she wants to hide the connection, but it's, it's very funny. And it works on family and friendship values. Judy Moody Ex Experta and Libros, Judy Moody Book Quiz Whiz. On this one, Judy Moody and her uh, brother, Sting, are planning to attend to um, a book quiz. And they are reading like crazy, like Judy Moody wants to do things that she finds in the book, like hanging upside down, like pipi medias larga, pipi, pipa medias largas, pipi lana stocking, and teaching herself to speed read The Princess in Black. Estine is crazy, like trying to see what all the penguins in Mr. Popper's Penguins books and everything because they found out that they're competing with people that are, are in higher grades and they get very nervous about it. It's very fun as all the series. It's number 15 of the series, the other is number 14, full of adventures as always. And we have teacher's guides and reading guides 
for the Judy Moody's books on our website as well. The Ica Bug is the new book by the author of the Harry Potter books, J.K. Rowling. And this is a completely illustrated book and the pictures on it are from children around the world in the different editions. In our case, the pictures are from kids from Mexico. This is the story take place in Cornucopia, a wonderful rich kingdom where they have the menace of the Ichabog. Some people seem he's a ghost, he's not real, but at the end he arrived and Bear and Daisy embark on a great adventure to untangle the truth and find out where the real monster lies and bring happiness to Cornucopia once more. I want to read this. I'm sure it will be great for kids and adults alike. Becker para niños, Becker for children. Poetry is trendy for children and adults in this time. And Magela Ronda brings here an illustrated anthology that compiles the best rhymes and legends of Gustavo Adolfo Becker, this romantic civilian poet, is one of the most well-known of the Spanish lang language. In this book, children will discover a selection of the best rhymes and legends of the author, perfect for experiences his work for the first time. Simplemente Charlie, <laughs> essentially Charlie, the ultimate guide to keeping in realm. I'm sure you all know her from TikTok, Charlie D'Amelio. She's the only TikTok personality to have more than 100 million followers, but she wants to um, portray in, in this book that she is a real person. And for the first time, she shared here the intimate details of her life, how she navigated challenges and stayed positive in the face of the cyberbullying who was her as a little girl. She talks about her family and she teaches us how to navigate social media, make friends there, and at the same time, develop the strong and confident identity. We have a few books by influencers, but this is the first time we have one that, they, okay. We have a few books with about influencers, that work everything in Spanish, but this is the first time we have one that is big in English and we have a translation. If you want more books about influencers, just let me know. We have more and more all the time. Gritar a la lluvia by Linda Mullally Hunt. She's the author of The Fish in a Tree, a bestseller book of the New York Times. This is the story of Delcy. She, she lives in Cape Cod and her summers are always very happy and full of friends until she uh, starts to grow, to grow up. And some of her friends are very rich and they start living like different life and not looking at her anymore. And then she finds a new friend, Ronald. We have kind of the same problem she has she has been abandoned by her mother. She lived with her grandma. And they work together through this process. These are unforgettable characters that will make children think what friends and family mean. We also have a free downloadable reading guide on our website for this book that works on family and relationships, acceptance and belonging, growing up, friendship, intergenerational, and will be a great summer reading. La Torre de Nerón, The Tower of Nero, is the last book of the Trials of Apollo series, um, another bestseller of the New York Times. Rick Riordan is considered the storyteller of the gods because of these and other four series that are based on mythology. This is the conclusion of the Percy Jackson saga. 
a new take on Greek and Roman mythology from the point of view of a fallen god. This, is, this book introduced new demigods and is perfect for middle schoolers, but usually in Spanish, we have noticed that it's a crossover. Actually, if, I'm sure you have, you have seen them in Barnes and Noble in a section where the crossover are. Coronavirus by Ben Martinoga. This is an illustrated guide that explains to children everything they need to know about COVID-19. Ben is from the United States and he's a scientist. It's written in a very funny way. So it is like an adventure uh, of a virus inside a body and how to fight it. It immerses you in the fascinated world of viruses and kids will discover fun and terrifying scenes about the pandemic that has changed the world. It's fascinating. The books explain to the little ones the, 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 the situation we're living now and tells how to find the viruses and the origin of them. It's, it's really, really fun. I, I have seen some interviews and we can all learn on this book. For me, it can also work as a crossover and it's a great reading for kids, for the, the whole family together. Hood, La Odisea de los Búhos is not new, but has been out of the market for a while. This book by Carl Heisen was made into a movie in 2006. It's a modern classic that is always recommended for summer reading and also a New York Times bestseller. It is a hilarious adventure of a boy that moved to Florida and discovered a completely new world. It is a new very honor book also have free downloadable reading guide on our website and you will be able to treat here themes as ecology, adventure, conservation, teamwork, friendship. Cartas de Cuba, letters from Cuba. Mm, mm, I'm not sure if you already know, but Vintage and Español is part of Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial now, and this is one of our new releases for Vintage in Español. Um, Pura Belpre Award winner Ruth Behar. This is her story. It's the story of a young Jewish girl whose case escapes Poland to make a new life in Cuba, where she works to rescue the rest of her family. She started writing letters to her sister, and through the letters, we can read the story of her immigration process. She told, she tell us about the kindness of the Cuban people, the discovery of um, their talent, and also she, she tells us how Nazis even get in there. The letters are beautiful. This is a very touching book that it's for grades five and up, but I'm sure a lot of adults will be able to enjoy this book as well. It's based on Ruth family history and the author lives here in the US. She speaks both English and Spanish and it's available for events in case you have something planned for libraries and you want to have her uh, for a talk or anything, um, it touched themes as diversity, World War II, family, resilience. The Prom by Sandra Mitchell and Matthew Strahr is the book that inspired the Netflix movie with Meryl Streep, Nicole Kidman, and James Corden. Uh, I already saw it, I don't know if you enjoy it. It's the story of two girls that are in love and they plan to Mm, to come out in the prom, but um, Alisa's mother, she's one of the girls that, that hasn't come out yet, is part of the PTA, and she's trying to prevent same-sex couples from attending the prom. So 
they cannot make it for the prom, but everything changed in this town when some Broadway stars arrived to the scene and fight with them to make it possible. Vero, uh, you only have about one minute left, so if you like to wrap it up and then we have one quick question. Okay, so we have here, somos, no somos de aquí. This book has received a lot of um, prizes and recommended everywhere. You have it here, like um, School Library Journal, Best Book of 2020. The author is bilingual, it's also available for events. It's like the American Dare for Young Adults. And it's the, um, it's the trip of three kids from Guatemala through Mexico trying to get here to the US and they uh, follow the route, the route of La Bestia. We have Alguien es el siguiente, one of us is lying, uh, the um, highly anticipated number one New York Times bestselling sequel to One of Us is Lying. And this, I think this is the last one, yes. The seven installment of the um, Throne of Glass series. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vero. We have a question Thank you. Uh, from Amanda Toledo, and it's regarding the, um, the book, the coronavirus book. And she asked, does it have a more serious moment to address the hardship for children who have lost family members to this virus? Um, I, I will have to check and get back to her because I haven't read the book. Thank you so much, Vero. Thank you. Thank you, Vero. Um, now we have our last presenter for today is Gabriela Uribe uh, from Fondo de Cultura Económica USA. Fondo de Cultura Económica USA is a reformer corporate member. For more information about this company and the contact information, please visit our website, reforma.org slash winter book bus, and continue to use our hashtag reforma book bus. Um, questions, please continue to add them in the comment in the chat box and we'll be reading them at the end. And we are recording this presentation. So here with us, we have now Gabriela Uribe. Hi everyone, do you hear me? Last yes. time we had a technical difficulty and I don't wanna get into that. Okay, um, my name is Gabriel Uribe. I'm here representing uh, the Mexican publisher Fond uh, Fondo de Cultura Económica. Uh, Fondo de Cultura Económica has been the leading Latin American publisher since 1934. And since 1991, we have published books and uh, we have published children's books. Um, our publisher has its headquarters in Mexico City uh, but we are, uh, we have an office in San Diego and we ship, um, we ship to all of the United States. Um, I'd like to emphasize that our main goal is to promote Spanish language in the United States. Most of our titles are originally written in Spanish, but whether a title is originally in Spanish or translated into Spanish, uh, Fondo uh, translates everything uh, in Mexico for Mexicans. So all of our translations are excellent. I'm, I'm gonna share our my screen. So. Huh. Here we go. Okay, um, I'm gonna present to you some titles from this collection. And I'd like to speak to you about this collection really fast. Uh, this is our picture book collection. It's a fascinating uh, uh, collection that we have. It opens like no other to diverse readings and at the same time to an aesthetic enjoyment, ranging from baby books to children's book. In this collection, we have gathered a sample of the world's best contemporary production. These are Juego de Manos uh, was released late uh, 20 in late in 2020 and Juego de Pies is coming out 2021. Both of them are by the same author. Uh, she's Korean. Uh, they're translated as finger play and toe play. In the pages of these books, young readers will learn to experiment through their hands or feet to create different shapes. 
that this book is ideal to stimulate the imagination of girls and boys to initiate them in exploration and discovery of the possibilities of their body. I love this book. It shares its value, values, and I like that it fe features diversity, um, showing different skin colors. Fingerplay won the Bronze Award at the Junior Design Awards in 2018 and Best Design Illustrated Book. Um, I wanted to include sneak peeks on, I think, most of our books uh, that I'm presenting today. So you can see the quality of the illustrations, on size and wording. We recently took pictures of all of our children's books and we will be uploading them into our website. So if you're interested in this title or any other title that I may not present today, they are not, they're now gonna be available in our webpage. Um, so you can, uh, this is for, uh, from Fingerplay and you can see how um, they play with the idea of using your hands and imagining something else. Um, we also have Alto Monstros, which is an almost wordless book. Wordless book. The only word that repeats itself is um, alto, which means stop. Um, it's a tale of two girls and a trip to the trash. They are stopped by several monsters who don't let them pass. The girls' trash become the monsters' treasures. The author uses bright colors and to tell a story about recycling, reusing, adventure, and surprise. It's targeted to preschoolers and kindergarten. I think this is my favorite book today. Um, uh, from Adolfo Cordova, he's uh, Mexican and illustrated by Cristina Sifa. Uh, this short and poetic text takes us on a journey through the human body. And Cristina's illustrations transport us to a world of imagination through colorful and playful images. The title meaning infinite or endless or unending, which the author references to childhood, where kids have infinite imagination or infinite possibilities. Throughout the book, we will see the sequence where a girl and a boy playing and observing their body use their endless imagination to describe themselves. This is a beautiful poetic book. It's meant for kids in elementary, but definitely enjoyed by many adults like me. <laughs> Um, I wanted to remind you that uh, we have Oliver Jeffers' collection. Um, he is best known uh, for his series and picture books, and we have his complete collection in Spanish. His newest title is Lo que construiremos, What We'll Build. What we'll build. Um, it's a father and daughter story. It's set about laying the foundations for their life together. Uh, this book is uh, like the second part of Here We Are, Aquí Estamos which is our best-selling children's book, um, which uh, talks about a vision to discover what the world is as it evokes and suggests what girls and boys can build in it. I really love these books. And again, the, this is a uh, picture of the inside of Lo que construiremos. Uh, we have it available now, ready to ship. Um, all of these are board books. I mean, they're, they're yeah. And, um, Okay, now we have Ian Faulkner, uh, which is the author and illustrator of all the title and best-selling Olivia series. This collection was recently reprinted, they're not new, but is now available in Spanish. I really love this character. She's strong and courageous. Uh, again, uh, inside of, of one of the, the series. Now we have Isol. Isol. She's from Argentina. She's an award-winning children's book illustrator and author. She will usually leave conclusions to the reader, which make, makes the stories mysterious and humorous with her free spirit style. All of these are award winnings or best-selling. Uh, perfect for kids who are starting to read in Spanish. Uh, I, keep, I keep saying that this is, I think, her best book. Um, it's targeted for kindergarten and lower elementary, but the, this is a love story for books. Uh, it teaches why books are sometimes better than any toy kids can get. Uh, they get to use their imagination and the possibilities are endless. This is inside of that book. Now, our collection, A la orilla del viento. We, I want to explain a little about this. Uh, collection. This is an illustrated book collection with the best literature for kids. Every theme and genre are part of, of it. Um, it is important and most of these books are available um, on all 
found digitally and we can and you can find them in all commercial platforms for individual sales or on overdrive i know a lot of libraries that use them so it's good to know um, that we have them there now um, it's this collection is classified by reading level and you can uh, identify the books depending on the color of each of, of the book that it's usually on the side like this one this is uh Siwar, which is one of our newest books from this collection, which is targeted to lower elementary. There are little longer stories, but uh, also brief and abundantly illustrated. You can see it in the picture that, uh, that I included there at the book. Um, it's designed for children who can already be, read by themselves. It, it still has a great deal of humor, fantasy, and everyday problems that children can relate to. Siwar um, by Cristina Falcón. Uh, she's from Venezuela. She writes us this story with illustrate, illustrator Francesca Masai. Uh, she's Italian. <laughs> the main character finds a, lovely, finds a lovely soul just like hers. Uh, what would happen if we understood pets? The story is about friendship, loyalty, loss, and transformation. Uh, now we have uh, Pantera Leo, which is under our Para los que leen bien classification for upper elementary. It's also a new title uh, by Alicia Molina. Molina. Julia, the main character, is an early teen who must move to a different school and different neighborhood. His parents have to travel and she is left with a distant relative. She starts as a girl, but at the end, she will be transformed into a teen. Her new surroundings feel like a zoo in which she has to survive. This is a great entertaining story for tweens <laughs> facing changes. Um, in this level of reading, we have uh, La Copa de Plomo y Oro by Cornelia Fuchs. She's German. Um, she's best known for her titles, Hineta el Dragón, El Caballero Fantasma. Cornelia crafts her stories around emotion emotionally complex characters that have led many to think her as a master storyteller. La Copa de Plomo y Oro is not the exception. It is a story about a young girl who struggles to survive in the streets searching for treasures on the riverbanks. She will soon discover that there are better fortunes than finding a magic class. Target to upper elementary and more of the middle school, but it's 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 pretty it's a pretty short story. There are only 80 pages. Um, I think the pictures of the inside of the books have, will be a great tool for everyone. So it's it's new for us and we're very excited to be sharing that. Um, you can see the font size, the wording. Now, Espacios para la Lectura. This is a collection that we have. I wanted to include, it, uh, include this collection we have at Fondo. It is not a book for children, but more for librarians or teachers and parents. Espacios de Lectura, which translates as spaces for reading, is a collection aimed to open a space to which the public and researchers can approach related issues with active reading, writing, and user training of the written language. This new release trans translates as the oral language, individual, and social destination for girls and boys by Evelio Cabrejo. Uh, I found it very interesting. Um, our oral language is a social, it's a social music shared and the words audible part of what the speaker contains in their inner world. Avelio talks about the benefits of reading aloud in early childhood and also makes a deep analysis on how literature can feed natural abilities related to the faculty of language. This book offers an exquisite read that is fundamental for the study of the spoken language. Um, these two are for our YA audience, Los Carcomidos. Um, it, was, uh, it was released in late 2020 uh, by Agustin Cadena. He's a Mexican author known for La Sed de la Mariposa, La Casa de los Tres Perros. He brings us this new title called um, Carcomidos, which means rotten. It is a friendship zombies crime story. And uh, for 2021, we have Salvajes by Antonio Ramos Revilla. Uh, the main character's life is complicated and lacking. It progresses uneventfully one, until one day the police violently takes his mom away. He and his brothers must find every possible way to release her from a wild system that labels them and discriminates. A story about family, social diversity, discrimination, and injustice. 
Um, here's a sneak peek of what these books look like. Um, and then we have Resonancias. Resonancias is a collection that is aimed especially at young people who are regular shalers of picture books. Um, uh, Una Canción Que No Conozco by Micaela Shirif. Uh, she's a Peruvian author known for her Más Te Vale, Más Te Donte book. In this title, she works with Mexican illustrator Juan Palomino. This book is about mel melancholy, nostalgia, death, and friendship. It is a poetic book with few words based on a poem from the same author. She writes about how you can feel accompanied by memories from lo loved ones who passed away. It's, it's a beautiful written book and illustrations are amazing. I highly recommend it. Um, it's definitely for young adults, but it's, I truly enjoyed it. You know, we can always feel um, that, you know, we, we can always feel a loved one near. And I think this is a beautiful way that it was written to describe that feeling. Um, we also have, uh, I don't know if you guys know, Premio Hispanoamericano Poesia para Niños. Um, it's an annual poetry contest made by Fundación para las Letras Mexicanas in collaboration with us with Fondo de Cultura Económica. The award is international in nature and has the intention of putting universal culture in the hands of children and creating spaces to analyze and promote children's literature. The winner from 2019 was also the author Micaela Shirif, or Shirif um, El Mar, and we will publish her book this year and it will be available in the US. Speaking of poetry, <laughs> I wanted to uh, show you that we also have these available. Um, they're beautiful illustrations and writing. Uh, we have Cuando Fuiste Nube and Esto Que Brilla en el Aire. Both of them also won the, the award that I was talking about, um, Premios Panamericano de Poesia para Niños. Um, and also a top seller that we have, uh, El Pájaro del Alma, which is a beautiful book that talks about listening to the bird of the soul that dwells deep inside us. Uh, all of them are targeted uh, for upper elementary or middle school. They're beautiful. Um, we've had teachers that uh, get them so they can uh, have this guided reading to them and they discuss what, uh, what they think the words mean. Um, I also, I'm almost finished. <laughs> I also wanted to share the 2021 book selection for Evie, which is the International Board on Books for Young People. Um, all of these are available in our warehouse, warehouse in San Diego. And before finishing, I want to let you know that we are starting a monthly newsletter, uh, which will include a sale on a genre and, of course, new releases. Please uh, feel free to write to me or add your email on our webpage so you can start receiving, receiving them next month. Here is our webpage and our uh, social media. Um, what else? <laughs> also on our webpage, we have an Excel sheet list of all our, of our titles information. And we are including now in our catalog links to the sneak peeks that I was telling you about and all, all, all of our children's books. We invite you to visit us and connect with us for more information. Please let me know. There's my email. Any questions? I'm, I'm available. Thank you, Thank Gabriela. You. There was one question from Deborah asking if a book you were showing them was a board book or not. I oh, think no. it's, finger yeah, it's a picture book. It's, I, I, it's just hardcover. I didn't show any board books. I think that's what I think that made sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Gabriela. And we want to thank Yuji Morales and all the presenters from Chao Luna, Penguin Random House Library Market, Marketing, Scholastics, Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial, and Fondo de Cultura Económica. This was the fourth event of the Reforma Virtual Spanish Language Book Bus, our winter series. And we're featuring 18 distributors and publishers. So go to our website, reforma.org forward slash winter book bus to register to attend future events and also to find past recordings and the slide and slideshows from the presentations. Reforma is an affiliate 
of the American Library Association. We're bringing this program series free of charge. If you would like to support Reforma, consider becoming a member, volunteering, or donating. You can go to reforma.org slash get dash involved. Uh, next Thursday, February 18, we have one more session scheduled. Our keynote speaker will be Isabel Quintero and Lil Libros, Cinco Books, Latin American Book Source, Vista Higher Learning, and Lian Law Books will join and present their new children and young adult or adult titles. Los esperamos. Muchas gracias. <laughs>